Hello, uh, this is week five of Technology and Society. I wonder what I'm doing. I've got my dog down here who's uh, pestering me today. Uh, today's um, talk is about government and artificial intelligence, government and technology. And I think it's best to treat this in, in a number of ways. One is the use that government makes of technology uh, and also how government uh, has to deal with technological use by other uh, uh, parts of society. Government is increasingly using technology for a variety of things. In the Australian context, the one that we, we're probably most aware of because there's a recent report is the robo-debt um, commission and use of uh, algorithms and artificial intelligence to collect unpaid debt or overdue debt from people who owed money. The fact that the uh, software was, was flawed, uh, uh, the fact that civil servants knew about that, uh, the fact that ministers knew about it didn't seem to stop it uh, uh, taking place. Um, people found themselves in desperate uh, straits because they suddenly didn't have as much money as they hoped for. Um, some people committed suicide, some people became ill, some people became homeless. Uh, uh, all because of the lack of a human mind behind this. Uh, um, really quite awful. We see a, a similar kind of uh, situation occurring in the UK, for example. Um, in the United Kingdom, most postal services, uh, uh, post office services, are run by what we would call mom and pop operations. Small stores that have a counter that acts as a post office. Um, some years ago, the post office, which is a big state corporation, decided to introduce a new computer system that would automate all the accounting uh, and financial aspects of the, uh, um, of the post office. So at the end of the day, postmasters and postmistresses would have an automatic talking up of everything that's come and gone, the stamps, the pensions they've given out, the, the, uh, all the other stuff that they, they dealt with. What became clear fairly early on was that there seemed to be a lot of mistakes being made by um, postmasters and postmistresses. They found themselves claiming up short, maybe £2,000, maybe £4,000. And on dealing with uh, 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 the situation, they found out that um, it wasn't, uh, uh, you know, they thought the computer must be at fault. No. The uh, post office was quite insistent on the fact that the technology was perfectly okay. It was them that was at fault. A number of these people ended up being prosecuted. A lot of them lost their businesses. Similar sort of story. Uh, uh, and it was only years later we found out that the technology was thoroughly flawed and, and was allowed to continue in this particular kind of way. It's not good. So those are two examples, robo-debts and, and post offices where technology went haywire. Technology introduced by government, uh, uh, supposedly to help people, went haywire and made their lives much worse, much more miserable than they should have been um, in this way. So, uh, 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 where does this lead us? Well, government is using technology more and more. The more government can automate services, the better. You'll notice in the materials, I've given you quite a bit of uh, uh, material on Estonia. Uh, and the reason for that is because Estonia is one of the key countries in the world that is using technology to put government online and to make government accessible and easy for its citizens. And even those citizens who cannot live in Estonia but still be citizens, the e-citizens, uh, um, access everything uh, uh, online. The Estonian government has even set up voting in elections to be done online um, using blockchain as a, a way of doing it so that the voter you or me uh, um, can vote we can see that our vote has gone to the right place the right candidate the right party and so on um, on the other side the, the the government can see that we voted not where we have voted not who we voted for but they are aware that we have voted that's all they need to know so um, Governments are beginning to you know, use uh, 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 technology to kind of simplify and standardize things. 
we know that there's been an increase in telehealth in this country, for example. Um, medical records will become digitized and accessed more through uh, uh, computers. Possibly uh, uh, um, we will be using uh, uh, technology to uh, automate those kinds of processes. Not, I hope, in the same way that robo-debt robo became automated, but, you know, for people with maybe repeat prescriptions or things like that, you know, that's going back to the medical side of things. Um, but people who uh, uh, are receiving pensions from the, from the state, um, all of that can be automated, pay, automated payments into banks and things like that and so on. Um, tax could be largely be automated. One of the ways which uh, uh, government may introduce um, more automation, and this is a new one, is the area of central bank digital currencies. At the moment, if you want to send money from one part of the world to the other part, from Australia to the UK, you have to convert from Australian dollars into UK pounds. Um, that's expensive, it's slow, and it's time consuming, and the banks make a profit out of it. If central banks, like the Reserve Bank of Australia or the Bank of England in, in the UK, had their own digital currencies, you'd be able to transfer money instantaneously and, and very easily. China, for example, is introducing a rather unusual digital currency. China wants to stop its citizens from using uh, um, cash and moving over to the digital currency because then it can track what they are spending their money on. So in other words, China would be using a digital money as a means of surveillance. Are you buying illegal goods, legal ones, or what? We can see where the money is going because the money is code and we can follow the code in, in that way. And I think we're going to see more and more of that. We know that governments are using facial recognition systems to identify people. If you look at your passport these days, you know it has all kinds of codes in it. When you come through the airport, you stand in front of a machine, it takes a photograph of you, it examines your face. If you match uh, uh, the records um, it's got in its database, it lets you through. So we are finding increased use of this. Now, remember, as always, these systems are only as good as the data on which they are fed are, um, and trained. If you put in rubbish data, you will get rubbish results. We see that with facial recognition. Um, facial recognition has difficulty in distinguishing between different kinds of black faces, uh, dark faces, people of color. It, oh, it makes more mistakes on, on those than it does with white faces uh, or some Asian faces. So there are still many, many issues around that. Well, that's to do with the way government is using AI itself. But what about other uses of AI which government has to be aware of and maybe regulate? And the regulation part is, is important. So if we look at, for example, at finance, uh, um, which I partly mentioned before, more and more we need to regulate how people invest their money. We need to think about the way cryptocurrencies are being used as scams. Can we protect people from them? And that is using these are our companies which are using technology which need to be regulated by government. Do we have the right kinds of regulation in place? How do we regulate free speech? How do we regulate the grooming of minors uh, uh, by people online? How do we make companies like TikTok and Facebook accountable for what they do and responsible for what they do? Can we do that? Can government regulate people that way? It's, it's problematic. Uh, uh, it's not easy, but these questions are going to become more and more uh, 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 run-of-the-mill questions and typical questions as we go on, as more and more AI is brought in as a way of governing our lives. Thank you.